Welcome to Inside the 209. I'm your host, John Ellis. This is our second show for January. We're real fired up about this show. What a great show we have on tap for you. We're coming right off of New York, Syosset, Long Island, legendary club, as I mentioned in the last show. What a great event. You know, I'll tell you what, my dad always talks about going out to this event, and it's his favorite as a coach of the 209. He just loves being out in Long Island, around this club, it's something magical for him. Uh, the players seem to do pretty well, too. What a great Ectalon showing we had. Check out IRT Network for the archive matches. You're going you're gonna to get a treat with that. Moving on in this show, we're going to have a little bit of footage on Diaz and his deadlift. Little guy's got some strength. He's got a lot of lower body strength, and you're going to get a look at that with this, with this show. Also, Marky and how he goes about doing some work for midcourt. Giving himself beads, midcourt shots. Then we'll roll over to Jesse working on the ladder. I don't know why they didn't bring me into that portion of this video because I'm the baddest there is on the speed ladder, but apparently Jesse thinks he's good too. So let's check out Jesse, see what he looks like. And then we'll go to a little fun, something fun, small ball. Now small ball was created back in the early to mid 80s. A lot of guys on the East Coast were playing small ball in the hallways during tournaments. Remember tournaments back then, four, five, six hundred, seven hundred junior players finding ways to make things fun outside of the match play. Small ball was created. From there, small ball became very popular at the university I went to in Missouri, Southwest Missouri State. We played small ball all the time, had tournaments for it. Some of the best small ball players in the world come from their time at Southwest Missouri State. So you'll see a little bit about the game there and see how I handle Bobby Horn in the end. And then we'll wrap it up with a little bit of preview of Modesto which is an IRT satellite tour around Stockton here. So we're going to have some good play going on with the 209 guys in that show. Should be a great show. Stay tuned. All right, everybody. This is Jose Diaz with Ectolon TV. We're about to show you how we get down in the weight room. All right. We're going to do some squat or some deadlifts. Squats, deadlifts, whatever you want to do today. It's going to hurt. It's going to be fun. Don't want to do this, but if you want to win on the court, you got to do that off work stuff. All right, enough for the rest. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to do a deadlift. We're going to have that overhand, underhand grip, okay? So as you can see, we're not going really heavy today. <clears throat> not really heavy. Uh, so what we're, what we're going to do is maintain a, a little bit closer than shoulder width apart. Kind of just let your hands drop. So what you should do is just let it drop. Grab one side, on your hand, one side, over. Alright, so when you have that base, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lift. Easy, right? Alright, so now we're just gonna bring that down, hips back, let it drop. When you're here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna thrust through that bar. So that we're lifting. All right, one more time. Just like that. Do that about eight times. You'll fill it in the morning. 
Off court training, Jose Diaz, Exelon TV. Stay tuned. I'm gonna get back to my workout. Okay, we're back. I told you little Diaz has some big strength in that lower section, man. He's got a really strong butt on him. Deadlifts has a lot to do with it. Definitely needed in racquetball. I'm proud of him for putting in the work like he's doing. Let's move over to my dad and Marky on court. Talking about a little bit of mid-court action there. This is important stuff. You're going to see a little bit of coach-player relationship going on here, so check that out. Hey everybody, this is Marky Rojas with Ekbalon TV. So today we're going to do some drills that simulate the real game action. I'm going to be on the center court and my coach is going to give me some feeds. What, what do you think is the most important about this drill, coach? Well, it, it just it's something that occurs in the game a lot. You're, you've taken good center court position, it's great. The uh, opponent leaves the ball up and it's coming right at you, right at your feet. And you got to handle it. You got to judge, first of all, am I going to have, should I have to take it right there? If, or is the ball going to come off the back wall? If the ball's going to come off the back wall, considerably off the back wall, I'm going to let it go and play it off the back wall. If not, I got to hit a good shot from that spot. And I want to hit a shot that will keep my opponent on the defensive. And that's my goal, my objective. I don't hit the ball that hard, so I'm going to move up and kind of cheat up and try to hit it right at Marky at different heights, and he's going to judge whether to let it go or not. Let's do it. Come on, coach. Here we go.
We gotta keep fight, we gotta keep hitting, keep shooting. As you see, I, I mean I work out, but this drill can keep you or can get you tired very easily. So be prepared, it's not a hard drill. Just have somebody, I have my coach just giving you drills, and there's gonna be a point where you gotta have patience because you're gonna have a lot of balls on the court. So just know that this drill is one of the best drills that we do, and it's a great warm-up drill as well. Anything else, Coach? You want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you know, Mark is a professional. Two professional. I think he's moved into the top eight or at least top ten. And uh, right now, this seems like a very basic drill. And the importance, uh, the importance of consistency cannot be overestimated. And even the best pros are doing these fundamental drills all the time. Just remember, stay low and have your racket up. If I can go back and you watch this drill, you can see that when I'm low and I have my racket up, I usually kill the ball or the ball's down. But when it's up, left up, or it's a skip ball, it's because my racket ball fundamentals aren't really there. Now, I'll see you next time here on Ectalon TV. This is Marco Rojas. Work hard, baby. Hey guys, I'm Jose Rojas, number four racquetball player in the world, and I'm here to talk about the Max Tac Pro glove. The key feature of this glove is the new texture pattern with the extra tackiness on the palm side. This really gives those players that, you know, really want that extra tackiness, the extra stickiness to really lock in your grip, to not have to worry about your racket always slipping. The extra features that this glove has is the foam on the pinky and the ring finger. Um, this is great for those players who like to dive. Um, this really not only protects your hand, but it keeps the glove from really ripping. The biggest thing that I like about this, aside from all that, and it's the reason why I decided to play with this glove, is the longevity, the durability. I can go three or four games without having to change my glove. I mean, you're, if you're one of those players like myself that your glove's always getting wet and you have to constantly switch your gloves, this is the glove for you. So I really, really recommend it. Welcome back to Inside the 209. I'm your host, John Ellis, back from commercial break. Let's go into a little bit of our boy, Jesse Cerna, showing you how to do the speed ladder. And as I told you at the beginning of this, they should have called this guy right here to show it off, but they didn't. Jesse Cerna's pretty good at it, too. Take a look. Jesse Cerna with Excellent TV, working with the agility ladder today, a basic speed and agility tool. Most people have done some work on it in some form or another. I'm going to go through a basic drill today, what we call box apart. Um, really just talking about basics on working the ladder. Some people run the ladder, we want to think about working the ladder. How, again, how do I make this tool or use this tool to make my racquetball game better? So a couple basic things before we start. Box apart drill is simply that. Every time you stake a step in the ladder, you take a lateral step creating a box apart between your two feet. So we're working on the ability to push laterally in both directions. Pretty straightforward, right? Seems like it would be, but I'm going to give you the cardinal rule, and this is as basic as it gets. Lateral movement 101. If you want to move to your right, you've got to push with your left. If you want to move to your left, you've got to push with your right. Keep that thought in mind. You can't have that obvious fact enough push to go anywhere. Lateral movement's about push. So let's work it here, moving to my right. In a good racquetball position, I think about where do I stand in the court when I'm in defense or returning serve. For me, I'm about right here. Balls my feet, hips flex, engage in my core, looking straight ahead. First movement then is a push from that left foot to create that box apart. There it was. Let's continue that pattern all the way down. You can see I'm working to keep my hips level that whole time, moving back the opposite direction, same thing. I'm not working simply on moving my feet, but how do I control my center as I move my feet? All right, pretty straightforward drill, right? Not that complicated. Here's the thing, are you doing it perfect? Are you on the balls of your feet? 
Are you pushing? Are your abs tight? Are your shoulders level? Are you simply going back and forth? Think about it again. Sit, rack a ball position. Balls of your feet, abs tight, level shoulders. Let's make it move. Now are you just using the ladder or are you working the ladder? Keep that thought in mind. If it don't feel like racquetball when you're training, it's not making your game better. Well, I hope you enjoyed that segment on the speed ladder. Now, if you're a player that has never done any speed ladder work at all, make a change. You've got to have the speed ladder in your repertoire of speed workouts, workouts in general, and it's a lot of fun. Find that speed ladder, buy one, get started with it. Hopefully some of those drills that Jesse showed you are items you can Im implement right away. Moving on, we're going to go into a little bit about small ball. Going to get a little instructional about it, but you're also going to see some play footage too. It's a lot of fun and it's more than just a game that's fun on the court. It's great practice for your hands. You see how these pros have some great hands. They're able to take pace of 140, 50 mile an hour shots coming right at them and redirect it with a little bit of hands. It's just what you get good at when you're playing small ball. So learn the rules, see how it's done. Don't swing too hard. Game's about touch and then try it at your local club.
no avoidable hinders. There are a little bit of hinders in the game. We'll play rallies while we're on top of each other and we're reading where you're going. Remember, no big swings there, so nobody should take a rapid to the face or anything like that. You get too close to each other, just play a hinder. Okay, that's where I'm at. Let's do this some more rallies.
about five minutes. I've got a sweat going right now. I have a feeling we're gonna keep playing and just let Nick kind of watch us here. We probably have more filming to do, but I think we're done for the day. We're gonna play small ball, it's that much fun. Thanks for watching here on Inside the 209. This is the on court version. See you soon. What's up? Downtown Phoenix, Why Not Cafe. Throwing down, check this out, look at this. I'm about to throw down awesome Southwest burrito. Sands the tortilla. Um, this place is awesome, fresh, locally grown, organic, all that good stuff. And uh, in fact, everything is so fresh. I tried to order my burrito with a side of sour cream one day. It didn't actually work out because I found out that there's no freezer in the back, so there's just no way to store the sour cream. That's how fresh everything is. All right. Eat clean, train hard, enjoy. And I'm glad he is using my Ruben Gonzalez racket. Yeah, you know, he's exactly. that, that's the new generation. And I'm glad uh, we got a new racket that, uh, that he's able to, uh, to play with and have a lot, of, a lot of success and a lot of power behind that racket. Um, do you think you could probably get an autographed copy of it maybe? Um, Absolutely. Maybe. We'll, we'll see how we'll, we'll see how we'll see how he does in the next tournament. Okay, welcome back from the small ball segment. Hopefully, you enjoyed an up close look at small ball, getting some of the rules to give it a try at your club. It's great for the hands, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, let's move on to Modesto. This is a Tier 4 satellite stop. It's only 40 minutes away from Stockton here, so it's going to be a better than normal Tier 4. You're going to have some of the 209 guys taking part in this event. Not sure if Jose Rojas at the number 4 ranking will take part in this, but it'll be a great event. I'm looking forward to it because I get to call the matches on the IRT network with my buddy Nick Irvine. Saturday morning starts the quarterfinals into Saturday evening semifinals, and then the finals will be Sunday at 12 o'clock. Look forward to that. Should be some great play going on. That's our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed Inside the 209. We'll be back next Wednesday with a new show with fresh new ideas. So tune in. See you then. Yeah.